Alright guys, I've gotten a few requests on doing a uh, little tutorial on how I am creating units. Um, and so I'm going to just do this real quick. I'll walk through the creation. I think we'll make a Dragoon unit and call that good. Um, hopefully this is helpful. I'm not going to be able to walk through every everything. I just don't have time, but this is pretty basic and you should be able to fill in what I don't cover with your own knowledge. So the first step, the things you're going to need uh, are this pack file manager and I use the rusted pack file manager. Um, the rusted one is the only one I could get to work where I edit the localization files without it absolutely crashing the game every time I touched anything. So I used like four different iterations of the old pack file managers and I couldn't get them to work. But the rusted works. So I would go with rusted. Um, if you want to edit things into the campaign, you will have to get a um, ESF editor. I'm not going to go over that right now. Just for simplicity's sake. Um, well, not necessarily. You don't necessarily need an ESF editor unless you're editing units to only be recruitable in certain areas. But So for the start here, let me close that. Um, the first step once you install this is to just go ahead and create a new mod. So for me, I already have these ones made. Um, but for you, it go pack file, new pack file, and it will ask you, oh, no, sorry, ignore that. You go my mod, and then new my mod. You should have already, when you install this, set up where that will go, and you'll name this, so like test mod, or something like that, whatever you want to name it. I already have that made as, um, Sweden here. This is my Swede pack. Um, after you make this, it'll it'll have the name like this and nothing in it. What you want to do is right click, add, and then add from pack file. For I have it as a quick save on here, um, but you'll want to navigate to your data folder for Empire Total War. And generally, you'll want to use the, the newest patch. Now, some specialized units are in the older patches, um, so you'll have to search through that if you can't find what you're looking for. But generally, um, you add from patch 5. And then, it'll bring up a whole browser. I'll just do it. You know. So let's say I want to add from patch 5. It brings it up over here, you expand it, and the biggest thing you'll want to do is the database, and there's just a few of these that you'll need. So for example, you need a units table, a units to exclusive faction, unit to unit abilities, unit stats land table, and for the campaign you need a building units allowable. And if you want it to be only in one region, you know, like a local area of recruitment, then you have to get this folder as well. To get a folder, you simply navigate to it and double click and it'll boost it over. So once you've copied all that, um, you can open up your units. Now I just made a new units table. Um, because you don't have to create a whole new or you don't have to have all the old files in there so you can delete your the old files because the game still has them in its patch what you're doing is creating a new pack that will it'll read from this pack first and anything it's missing from this pack it'll go to the original game files um, if you think of it like a filter almost so anyways 
hopefully, if you need help with the pack file manager, there's a really good tutorial and guides online. So I'm not going to walk through that too much. I'm just going to show you the step by step for unit creation. So the first thing you have to do is this units um, table. So on the units, you'll see that these are the new units I've added so far and some basic information about them that way. The first step you're going to want to do for a new unit is right click and add row. It doesn't matter where you right click, you just need to add a new row. And then in here, we add the name of the unit. Now I add a prefix just because I'm going to add multiple nations and it helps me keep it organized. But you don't need that. For us, let's do SWE. Um, Dragoons, and then, I don't know, we'll call it, we'll have these Dragoons be from Svealand. On screen name doesn't actually affect anything in the game, I just put it in as an easy reference. So, Svealand, Dragoons. Now here, so you're just kind of walking through and filling these out. If you double click, as you saw, double click in there, you get an arrow that you can drop down and select the appropriate cat category. So these are Dragoons, the class, once again double click, drop down, we're going with Dragoons. So this is the cost for multiplayer, but it also affects single player custom battles. So, I don't know, I'll throw in a, a number for now and we can balance it later. And you can adjust if things get cheaper over time. So if you're doing a late cost, it'll, it'll make it this. Um, this is information for the campaign. So this stuff will be edited I'm doing multiplayer first and then I go back and recalibrate things for the campaign. So for now I'm just going to do ones across the board, but say you want, this is your campaign creation cost and upkeep cost in the campaign. So if you wanted to make it really cheap to recruit but really expensive to upkeep, that's where you would do that. And these are the action points. So this is how far on the campaign, campaign map it can travel you might just have to tweak it it's kind of you don't really know what the number means as far as like is it miles or what so next we get to the voice once again oh this one doesn't have a drop down so this is why I like to keep the database editor so DB editor only reads DB files but it's a good um, tool for me to use to have another units table here. It says all the vanilla units. Actually, this is one that I edited previously, but I can go find another Dragoon unit. So it's going to be Euro Dragoons, right? And we go over to the voice and it looks like the voice for this is just Dragoons. Real creative. So we go back to our pack file manager, paste it into there, and we need an icon name and info picture. Those are the paths that it, the game takes to find the little icon when you're in the game, like down here, and then when you right click on the thing, what picture does it pull up with the information about it? So once again, I go back to this and I'm just pretty much copying Dragoons right now. And if I take the time to make custom ones of these later, I can always go back and replace it. Now this is an important one. If you want your description and your uh, on screen name to be unique, you're going to copy your original name, your new name, 
from the key into this unit description text. This is important if you want to get a good localization with unique names. Unit region unit resource. So say you want this is its where it can be recruited. So I can make it global to so anywhere in the on the map. I can make it Europe. Once again, there's drop down. They have a set number of regions where resources are. If you want to create new ones, you have to create a new region, and that's a whole nother thing that I just had to learn myself. So for now, we're just going to do Sweden itself. I created that region. It's not going to be in yours. This is a total cap for the campaign, how many you can recruit. So if you only want to have one, you can put it like that. If you want to be able to have three, or if you want to have infinite, you put zero. Now, the game, or the, this really doesn't affect anything, but I keep it in there just to be safe. Because in the DB editor, that's how the vanilla files are. So I don't want to mess with that. If we go back to the pack file, this is pretty obvious multiplayer early, middle, and late. I don't know what the middle is. I always keep it checked though, because there's no middle drop down. There's only early and late. So dragoons are available in both early and late time periods. So I check both. Prestige, if you recruit it, none. It's not an armed citizenry. That means it, it's generated by the cities. And then this is the cap for multiplayer. So this is separate than the cap for the campaign, which is here. So after that, you can save your pack file. And you've got one of step one down. I make sure I have this copied. So copy. Or you can just hit Control C. And the next part I edit is unit to exclusive faction permissions. This is if you're creating a new unit. If you're just renaming a unit, you don't need to do this because it will already have it. But I'm right clicking, adding a row, hitting Control V. So this is the new unit. It's available for Sweden, and I check it. That means only Sweden can recruit this. If I leave it unchecked, it means everyone but Sweden can recruit this, if that makes sense. So it's just an, who's allowed to use this. Now you can jump. So that's, that's all we need to do for this one. You can jump to unit, to unit abilities. I usually do unit stats land next, though, personally. So once again, add row and we're pasting in our new name and this is how many troops are going to be in it so for a dragoon company it's got to be numerous because they're meant to be like mobile infantry so let's go to 10 that's large but not too huge now we have horses because this is a a cavalry unit I have to put in 210, a matching number of horses. For infantry, you just leave it at zero. And there's not a cannon, so no guns. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we have to select our officer, musician, standard bearer, and soldier model. These you can drop down. Um, and this is just the the model that's used for the different things. The only thing I have noticed is if you use one, some of these, it crashes the game, and you'll just have to go through and test. Your safest using Euro, whatever. So I'll do, I don't know if they have a special one for Dragoons. And if you want to check what the original vanilla files are, you can click on this, go to Unit Stats Land, boom. Let it load up. Find Euro Dragoons. Uh, there we go. So they used to use regular officer and a bugler and no standard bearer. 
I like standard bearers. I like the flags. So I'm going to add in, I think, a standard bearer. So we'll go back here, do an officer and a bugler, and I'm just copying these down, and a standard bearer. Now, soldier model, it doesn't have to match. So I, in order to have some cool uniforms, I'll find and mix and match the model. But for Dragoons, maybe this Dragoon, I'll just use a regular Euro Dragoons uh, model just for now. Paste it in. This is the man entity. I usually just match this to what the counterpart in the vanilla would be. So it's usually something like this. Looks like it's a medium. So I'll copy and paste. And this is the animation stable. This is important to get correct because this tells uh, the game how, how this soldier interacts. So if you look on here, the combination for a Dragoon is Rider, Musket, Saber. Because they're a horse, so Rider, Musket, because they have a musket, but they also, when they fight in melee, they use the Saber. So I hit Control C for that. And that's the animation. Equipment is probably going to be the same as this, but I'll check for, to make sure. Copy and paste. The armor is very light usually. I'll give it a two because I think that's what, oh no, I do th two or three for infantry, so we'll go with three. And it's leather, unless you want plate, which I give Swedish pikemen a little bit of plate. Um, leather. Man health, if you want to make like it take more than one bullet to kill a guy, you can affect that here with the man health I like to leave it at one now we have mounts which are horses so we choose what they look like it's another drop down uh, let's go oh, auto save so I can make them ride elephants here but I think we're gonna go with all white horses for our dragoons just because that's kinda neat now this is the mount entity. So if it acts as light horse or medium horse or heavy horse, it looks like for dragoons in original, they're medium. If you want to have like a lighter, so light horses move quicker but have less armor and all that, you can affect that. I'm going to stick with medium, so I'm just going to copy this instead of looking for it. And this always is Mount Horse, unless it's you want to change it to, I don't know, Elephant maybe? It's the animation style. I don't know what other types are. I'm just dealing with horses. Mount Armor and Health, just keeping it fairly consistent all through. If you have Artillery, this is where you'll add what kind and what not. If it's a siege gun, I think that means it's fixed, but I'm not exactly sure. Primary missile weapon. So for infantry, it's always musket, unless you're, yeah, it's always musket. If it's a cannon, I think you can do cannons here. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't have a drop down. But for cavalry that's mounted, it's a carbine. And here's their basic stats. So I want the Dragoons to be similar to a Musketman. So, in fact, I might even make it a Musket instead of a Carbine because I think a Carbine has different range values. Um, so let's see, Core Marksmanship, let's put it at 20 because that's a pretty middle of the road Marksmanship. And Loading Skill, um, it's going to be a little less because these are really the high quality Swedish infantry so let's go with 25 yeah I think that's good 
just leave a primary missile attack zero and here's where we choose what kind so flintlock this is where you would put like um, oops helps to spell it right a mistype in one of these categories will crash the game and you'll have to search for it so we don't want it to have a light infantry we just want a traditional musket flintlock and ammo we'll say they have a little less than average well that's pretty average we'll say 28 how about that just because and this is the skeleton for the gun it's a musket and the melee type is going to be a saber I believe but I, it's always good to check on the vanilla Uh, Dragoon Carbine Foot Musket. Oh, they have their own special. But it, Melee is Saber. So if the game crashes when I test it, we'll try switching this to a, the Carbine. But I'm hoping it won't. So a lot of this is just testing. Trial and Error. Melee Attack. This is where I want the Dragoons to not excel. I'm going to drop this down. Well, I'll give them a decent attack but really poor defense we'll go with 10 attack really low charge bonus because I don't want them to be used so much as cavalry um, I want them to be used in a more realistic model where they uh, um, sorry I'm thinking Thinking is hard. I want them to be used as a flanking force, dismount, and then fire. So here we have the animation for melee. It's mounted slash because they're horse. Paste that in there. Pistols. I'm not sure exactly what the pistol does. I tested it and I couldn't find anything. You really don't need it. Now the unit drill set will tell the the game how to use this. So these are cavalry. Um, I've never tried putting infantry on a cavalry unit, so maybe we'll try. Let's try it. Um, no, we'll we'll leave it cavalry. I'm I'm not brave enough. Sometime I'll I'll mess around with that and see. The training level does not affect their combat effectiveness, but their orderliness in line. So a well-trained unit looks very every soldier looks very similar a mob unit they're all scattered and disorganized and there's all sorts of different levels I want these guys to be trained but not like super organized you know morale obvious how it easily it breaks um, we will put this at a seven it's not the best rank depth so when it starts out and how the AI uses it. This is how many rows it will have. I'm going to put four. This is the spacing. So obviously horizontal and vertical. If you do a loose formation, they have to have a different number here. Um, so when they're in close formation, I want them to be pretty similar to but since we're doing dragoons which can dismount there's a whole nother category for dismounted so this is while they're on the horse so we want a horse spacing which this is what I have for horse spacings um, for most cavalry so I'll copy that over um, for Sweden was known for its really tight spacing cavalry but not necessarily as dragoons you make sure you fill in a number here if you do not the game crashes not sure why because I they don't have a loose formation option uh, that I'm giving these guys but even if they don't use it you need some number in there alright dismounted I want these guys to act like infantry so I'll go over to my point nine and point seven 
that's what I have used. I found it's nice and tight, but not ridiculously tight formations. And then base density is how heavy the unit is. I don't know what they have Dragoons going for here. Let's see. They have them as 10. No, that's Carissa's. Dragoons. Yeah, also 10. So, yeah, we can leave it. We'll give it a 12 just to have a little more weight. If you have like pikemen or some unit, maybe elephants, they can have a bonus versus cav in this. Check grenades or not right here. Skirmish means that they can fire and then retreat, kind of, if, if that makes sense. They can fall back. Um, Dragoons don't need that. I kind of leave it on, though, for most of them, just because it's nice. Guard mode, that's a good thing for Dragoons. This is necessary. Can dismount uh, for, for my Dragoons. If you don't have guys on horses or don't want to dismount, just leave it unchecked. All this is pretty... If it's a general, you can do can rally. That means it gives a... It helps recover units that are re retreating. And for me, with my line of sight system, I check all the hiding except for buildings. Can stock means it can move and stay hidden. Can snipe means it can fire and stay hidden. I don't want that. Does fire mounted by default? I do not want them to fire mounted. So. All right, so here we are in our spot distances. Um, now cavalry has a little bit better spot distance than infantry. So my infantry is 80, 100, 150. Cavalry is 80, 100, and 200. So, or 80, 150, 200, sorry. So dragoons will be the same. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory as to what these mean, so I don't have to go over that. Campaign stealth means on the map, campaign map, they can hide. Not necessary. Policing bonus. Discipline. Uh, we'll give it to them. Impetuous means they can go higher morale than regular units, so only some units can get that. Scares horses, no. I use this to make charges more devastating, but traditionally that's not checked in vanilla. Uh, fatigue resistant for like light cavalry or light infantry, I use that. Siege ladder means you can climb walls uh, with the grappling hooks. Sweden, I give cold resistance, though I don't think that does anything. Formed attack means they don't have to. Um, all be in a perfect line before they can fire, they can fire a little disorganized, which I like. Pike wall, pike square, those are allowing those units. And like a light dragoon can fire wall mounted, so you can check that, but I don't. So that's the biggest one you have to fill out. So we'll save that. All right, we're getting close, don't worry. So we've done units, unit to exclusive faction, unit sass land, now I jump to unit to unit abilities. Oh, you're gonna have to copy your name again because I copied other things. Unit to unit abilities, right click, add row, paste in your new name, and then you can do the drop down on this one. So the Dragoons, you wanna look at your options. What should they have? Um, I'll give them diamond formation. Every one of these you have to add a new one. So let me see what else they can get. I think there's a uh, wedge formation too. We'll let them have both. Well, maybe we'll get rid of diamond. If you want to get rid of just select it and then hit delete. So I would just give them wedge. I think that's all they'll need. All right. And if you want it in the campaign, you have to list what building will let what unit and if it gets any extra XP. 
So that's it for our new unit. So save, and then you go here, pack file, and install. That automatically puts it into your data folder. Okay, scroll down, sweet pack. There it is. Now, if you do that and you load up the game, you'll have your new unit, but it will all be blank. So, if you want your custom names and stuff to be in there, you'll have to make a new mod file. I called it localization pack. And into this, in the same method, you're adding the localization um, pack file. So, in that, from pack file, just like this, and it's called patch en dot pack. Now it's careful you don't want local underscore en pack. I did that for a long time and it didn't work. Patch en dot pack is the way to go. Add that in there and then open this localization dot loc. For a new unit I scroll all the way down to the bottom and add it. Otherwise you can look for, you can use the key button to sort it and find it. Um, but we are adding the new Dragoons. So add row. And this is where it is very important you type correctly. So the first thing you have to type is units with a S. I missed the S for a while and it blew up my game. On screen name. And then you paste in your new name. This tells the game, all right, this is what we're going to call it. So we'll call it Svealand Dragoons. I, I, I can look up the, I think the Swedish was Dragonar, something like that, which could work, but I'm just going to do Dragoons for now. That will change later. Then if you want to add a description, add a new row, maybe. All right, there we go. And the description one is unit, ah, unit description text, description text. I know it's kind of redundant, but, and then you paste it in. And this you can put in whatever. So, dragoons were used to ride to the flanks and comma dismount and fight as infantry. You can add whatever you want. Um, the unit description. Make sure all these are spelt right. Text with. And then you go pack file, save. And this is where things get a little tricky. You have to go to change pack file type and make it a patch. If this is grayed out, that means you have to go to preferences. Oops, I hit a button, my bad. Go to pack file, preferences. And down here, where is it? Um, one of these check marks is to allow editing right here. Allow editing of CA pack files. Check that. It'll probably give you a warning and then hit save. You never really want to edit the main pack files um, itself because you always want to have a backup. So I, that's why I create the new pack and then save it as a patch. So and then I go to change patch file type and go to patch. Then you can hit install. So we'll save it and install. Now we have one more step. We go to the data folder. And as we can see, things shifted because here's my new localization pack. But what we need is it to replace this patch en pack. So I have to delete this and rename this. But before I delete it, I have copied uh, 
backup files t into here. Um, I would recommend doing that just to be safe. But since I've already done that, I go into patch en and I hit delete. And then I rename my localization pack to patch underscore en. And now, if we were to load up the game, which I guess I can do, let's see, Empire, hit play, and once we load it up and we get a custom battle, it should work um, with the new Dragoons. So we shall see. If you get a crash at this point, that means there's something wrong with the game. Uh, your database f files that you edited. If you get a crash once you have set up the custom units and uh, hit play, that means you messed up something in the units uh, stats. It has to do with the, the model type or with the localization. So that's a, a little hint. Those are generalizations. I don't know for sure, but so we'll jump single player. I forgot to copy one localization thing, so one of those is gone. But we'll make a quick custom. Go to Sweden. Close this out and look for Colonial Dragoons. Ah, here they are. So they have the correct name, uh, and they have my new. Um, thing, but they look like they're a little too cheap. I didn't really count how cheap they are. So if you were to click that, we'll just load in with just the Dragoons. And we will see how things work. Hopefully this is helpful. I know this isn't the easiest or clearest process, but I'm hopeful that this is helpful. How about that? All right, so here we have our, our new Dragoon unit. We'll just start. They have their cool uniforms. You can change those uniforms. <laughs> That's awesome. Look at that. So there's some funny things you can get. He doesn't know how to ride. I've never noticed that before. That's pretty cool. So, and they have the dismount button and the skirmish button. So if we dismount, <laughs> he doesn't have the dismount animation either. Ooh. And now our unit is dense, like uh, they're supposed to be, like regular infantry. So that's uh, the basic tutorial. I hope that's helpful to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll see if I can answer it succinctly. But yeah, that's my process of adding a new unit. If you want to edit units, I would still recommend adding a new pack file because you don't want to edit the vanilla files. Anyways, um, yep, that's what we got. So I will catch you guys next time. I might make a follow-up sometime later um, to see how things work. All right, catch you next time.